audience. I love you guys. All right, I saw our next performer when I went to Eric Griffin's CD release party at the Laugh Factory and freaking loved him. He's just young and green and I wanted to just corrupt him, so I invited him to perform on the show. He's an on-air correspondent for AXS Live and he performs at the, at the Improv at the Laugh Factory all the time. He used to tattoo friends out of his grandma's bathroom and the thing his mother always said was, Grant, where have you been all night? Here is my man, the adorable Grant Cotter with Ami Mama Adriana. Hola. Oh, como estas? Okay, cállate. <laughs> Uh, my name is Grant Cotter, and I grew up on Catalina Island. There's two types of people that live on Catalina Island. Rich white people and Mexicans. I don't really know where I fall in that category because mi piel es el color como la nieve, pero mi corazón es café como chocolate. Which means my skin is as white as snow, but my heart is brown like chocolate. And I hope it isn't because I don't have health insurance. My parents and I never got along, we always butted heads, they were like real strict and they always made me do things like go to school, do my homework, not smoke cigarettes, you know, real bullshit stuff. My best friend growing up was and still is Pablo Maria. Pablo Maria was the brother I never had, but to Pablo, I was just his seventh brother. <laughs> Pablo's mom was great too. She treated me like an adult. She cooked me dinner, let me drink beer, smoke, and she called me her son. Pablo's mom was in her 40s, but she'd tell you she was 26. Her idol was J-Lo, and she could swear that they were twins, but they were most certainly not. Pablo's mom always looked like a glamour shot from 1987. The feather bangs, the boas, always dressed up like, Mijo, te gusta? No, I'm not. I don't take this stuff. <laughs> she had six kids, five of them lived with her, and one named David who lived in Mexico. I'm not sure why he lived there, she didn't speak about it much, maybe because she had her hands full here. After high school, my parents helped Pablo and I get an apartment in Huntington Beach on the premise that we went to college. So we moved across the street from Golden West Community College, our new alma mater. <laughs> Golden West is like the Harvard of Orange County. <laughs> Trust me. You know your school's legit when they have a swap meet there on the weekends. <laughs> What'd you major in? Bartering and trading? Pablo's mom, she used to come visit us a lot. She called our house her timeshare and she treated it like one. One time she came over on a random Tuesday and made us a big pot of pozole with chicken because I don't like pork. And we were sitting at the dinner table eating, having a great time, when she started weeping and bawling and crying to Pablo. <laughs> so sad. She was telling Pablo how she was lonely on Catalina, that her younger brothers were becoming unruly, and that she felt guilty that David was still in Mexico. That's when she presented us with an opportunity. A deal. If we could get David across the border, she would give us $2,000 cash, plus let Pablo claim two of his brothers on her taxes for an extra $2,000. <laughs> at the time, Pablo and I both worked at Pac Sun, which was, and still is, a shitty retail store in the mall. All we had to do was commit a couple of felonies and get four grand, 2,000 of which was from the U.S. government? Sweet, count me in. This dude, Mitchie George, who lived in our apartment, said that he and his friend used to smuggle people across the border all the time. All you need to do is go at night and get a really tall person to sit shotgun, have the person you're smuggling hide under their legs underneath the blankets. It's all about confidence, bro. That's what he said. <laughs> now, I was a confident kid. I mean, I was pretty good at everything I tried, so I figured I'd probably be pretty great at human trafficking, too. <laughs> Spent the next couple days coordinating with David on where we'd meet. 
David used phone cards, so I knew if I got a call from some crazy 3000000 number, that it was David calling me on a phone card he bought in TJ. We arranged to meet at the McDonald's in Tijuana because, in case you didn't know, there is nothing more American than a McDonald's. McDonald's is a real easy landmark to find. I watched tons of TV growing up, so I felt the right thing to do in this scenario was to assemble a team. A team of people that would be an asset to this mission. I did this the only way I knew how, by lying to my friends about the amount of girls that would be there. First up, I called Tanner. He was a big corn-fed white boy who'd ride shotgun next to me. Two all-American looking kids in the front seat would surely throw off any Border Patrol agent. Next person we called was Brendan, AKA Bernie. Bernie is a little kid who looks 12 years old, has a tattoo on his face. He wasn't really crucial to the plan at all. He just had gas money and some weed, so we brought him along anyways. <laughs> then Pablo, of course he had to come. He's a regular Mexican dude. And me, Grant, kind of lesbian-ish. Boom, team was assembled. Don't clap at that. Tanner, Bernie, Pablo, and I piled into my shiny blue purple Isuzu Truple. It was like a, a blurple color. Really, really blends in with everything. Driving into Mexico was easy. It was just like driving a bridge to Mexico, except one side's nice and the next side is filled with people trying to sell you chiclets and shark tooth necklaces and get you to go see a donkey show. It wasn't until we got out of the car that we really told him what we were doing there. It kind of went down like this. Tanner was like, oh, I need to bring back a poncho for my brother. And I was like, oh, well, I need to bring back a brother for Pablo. <laughs> so, let's party! Uh, Bernie and Tanner laughed as if I was joking when we laid down the plan. I mean, Bernie didn't care. He had a tattoo on his face, so clearly there wasn't too much in life that he did care about. <laughs> But Tanner, on the other hand, was a little pissed that we had made him an integral part of this plan and not told him about it. But after a couple shots of tequila, he was good to go and on team Get David out of Mexico. <laughs> Pablo and David hadn't seen each other in years and it kind of brought a little tear to my eye to see him reunite in McDonald's like that. But I didn't want to be the dude crying in McDonald's in Tijuana, so I sucked it in. <laughs> after 15 years in Mexico, David looked pretty Mexican. Uh, he was wearing a soccer jersey, cargo pants, a mana hat. Luckily, Papa brought him a bag of his old clothes to put on. To get that suburban chic look that we kind of have. David went into the bathroom looking like he was from Colima, but he came out looking like he was from Santa Ana. Real American. We then went off to kind of do our own thing. Bernie went to go try some to buy some muscle relaxers, and I was always kind of a pyro as a little kid, so I went to buy a bunch of fireworks. We were set. We loaded up the car, I stashed the fireworks in the spare tire compartment, but no pills. I did not want to get caught smuggling drugs across the border. <laughs> but illegal immigrants? Eh, why not? That's pretty cool. Bernie then popped all his muscle relaxers so there was no evidence left. Tanner sat shotgun, Bernie and Pablo were in the back, and I was behind the wheel. David crawled in and curled himself into a tiny ball with a black blanket covering him, and Tanner put his legs over him. We were drunk and excited, and it was a great combination for the mission we had at hand. I started the car, rolled down the windows, put on track seven on the CD, California Love by Tupac. <laughs> And we were off. I thought that was the perfect song to baptize David into America. Driving into Mexico took minutes, so we figured we would drive back just as easy. Unfortunately, for some reason, they were stopping every single car that comes from Mexico into the United States. Something we didn't think of. After listening to California Love four times, I started to kind of panic. We were so far away, I couldn't even see the U.S. border. Bernie was now passed out from too many muscle relaxers in the back seat, and I could tell that his muscles were really relaxed because he was drooling all over my car, which just added to my level of anxiety. After three long paranoid hours, we could finally see the U.S. border. We were right there. As we hit the final stretch of the border checkpoint, the car behind us started honking their horn. I 
start freaking out. They know. How does the car behind us know what we are doing? Why are they honking at me? What is going on right now? Oh my god. I tell Pablo, act casual, dude. Act casual. So Pablo rolls down his windows and starts whistling to one of the Border Patrol agents' drug dogs as if to kind of let the Border Patrol agents, they're like, yeah, I speak English, I'm a real American. So he's whistling at this dog like, come here puppy, come here puppy, Rin Tin Tin, K9 Cop, come here puppy, come here puppy. The car behind us is still honking, and two Border Patrol agents come and ride up, walk right next to our car to get a good view of what was going on behind us. They're wearing bulletproof vests, hat machine guns, and two giant German Shepherds. The car in front of us drove up, and we got waved to the checkpoint. 40 feet to freedom. So close. At this moment, it all hit me. Time literally stopped. I couldn't hear a sound. My thoughts took over. Oh my god, I'm smuggling an illegal immigrant in my car, registered to my dad, the three intoxicated minors, one of which is rolling on himself, has a tattoo on his face, I also have a spare tire case filled with fireworks, I'm ditching school, I didn't do my homework, oh my god. I came back to reality when the pungent smell of Axe body spray Phoenix scent filled my nose with Pablo in the back doing the X as if to get any smell of trouble out of the car. The officer looked in my car and asked me for my passport. Passport? What the fuck is a passport? I mean, I know what a passport is, I know it's crucial for international travel, but nobody told me I had to bring a passport to Mexico. Nobody told me I needed the thing that David didn't have. So he asked me for my California ID. I give him the ID, he inspects it, he looks at it. As he holds the ID in his hand, the car behind me honks again. <coughs> He looks back at Brendan. Brendan's still drooling on the seatbelt. Car honking again. The whole car is tense. Then Tanner starts laughing. And he's got a very loud, obnoxious laugh. He starts. I look at Tanner, like, what the fuck are you doing? I look at the security guard, Border Patrol agent. He starts laughing at Tanner's laugh, breaking all the tension that we had. The car behind us still honking. <laughs> he gives me my ID back and waves us through. I drive forward. He signals for the next car to come over for a secondary search. We made it. I'm safe. I'm in America. The officer could tell we had kind of been partying, and I think he mistook the look of fear in our eyes for premature hangover. We were there, we were in America. Pablo, Tanner, and I all burst into laughter. Bernie still passed out in the back, David hidden under the blanket, drenched in sweat. I pulled into the first parking lot I could see. It was a jack-in-the-box. Coincidentally, at that time, Tanner moved his legs and lifted David out, and David popped up like a jack-in-the-box. <laughs> It was so fucking poetic. <laughs> we completed our mission. Game over. We were kings. We outsmarted the Mexican government, the US government. Don't tell them that. <laughs> David didn't know much English, so we taught him the basics. Like, we taught him all the cuss words. We taught him nine inches, lesbians, give me a beer, dog. <laughs> The next day, Pablo took David back to Catalina Island where he was reunited with his mom. David now has four kids with three different women. And in 2012, he was deported back to Mexico. Where he is waiting for me, Bernie, Pablo, and Tanner to pick him up at McDonald's. Thank you guys very much.